everyone and welcome to this video today we will talk about reversible reactions and equilibrium so first what do we mean by reversible reactions reversible reactions are reactions where i will have my reactants giving me my product and my product with the form my reactants back again let's look at one example in here you could see the hydrated form of the copper sulfate if i heated the hydrated form of copper sulfate the water would evaporate and i will end up by the uh, unhydrated copper uh, sulfate form which is white in color uh, also i can reverse my reaction by adding a few drops of, uh, of water to my uh, unhydrated form which is colorless and i will have back again my hydrated form uh, which is blue in color so i can represent that by the, my forward reaction first uh, uh, first stage of my reaction where i have the hydrated copper sulfate to give me anhydrous copper sulfate with water and i can represent the backward reaction where i can add water to my unhydrated copper sulfate to give me hydrated form of the copper sulfate so i can um, put together these two reactions in one single reaction and, and representing uh, those two reactions by this uh, double arrow this double arrow means i have forward reaction where i have hydrated into uh, unhydrated form and the unhydrated form is back again can form my hydrated form so this is my reversible reaction and my reversible reaction usually is represented by this uh, double arrow that indicate the uh, two directions of my reaction what really happens during this reaction i ha i reach my theoretical uh, yield still uh, i have uh, so i have my product but still i have some uh, reactants that would form my product back again my product would just uh, reform my reactants so my uh, reactants is still forming my product because this is, st uh, is still the reaction didn't finish yet and my uh, product is uh, reforming my reactants you could see here i have here one example in here i have hydrogen with uh, i um with the iodine and the iodine gas have brown color uh, those two gases can uh, form my hydrogen iodide which is colorless you could see that reversible reactions uh, so in the previous slide we see the solid form of uh, re reversible reactions and the liquid form but here i have gas with gas so it can be also um, a reversible reaction can happen uh, with uh, reversible reactions can happen with uh, gases as well in here you could see that these two reactants is forming my colorless hydrogen iodide and this hydrogen iodide uh, once it is uh, formed it re uh, uh, so it reform my uh, two reactants back again so i have forward reaction and i have uh, backward reaction this is why what happens is actually not uh, if you uh, expose the iodine gas to uh, hydrogen uh, the color of uh, of the iodide is a little bit faint due to the formation of the hydrogen iodide uh, which is colorless but you still have some iodine left let's look at another example in fizzy drinks usually if you don't shake your uh, fizzy drink in, inside the bottle you could see that it should be a uh, carbon dioxide liquid inside uh, your uh, liquid and uh, once you shake your uh, bottle this uh, carbon dioxide would escape from the liquid forming the gas which you will uh, uh, find it as uh, bubbles so because this is a closed system what happens is actually the carbon dioxide gas uh, after uh, the bottle settles back again would uh, have the uh, carbon dioxide as liquid inside your physical drink but also you will have the uh, uh, liquid uh, carbon dioxide reforming the uh, carbon uh, dioxide gas back again so what i have is actually equilibrium this equilibrium can be disturbed by shaking the uh, bottle now what are the characteristic of my equilibrium so the characteristic of uh, the uh, reversible reactions uh, equilibrium my reaction is actually a dynamic reaction because i have a product that is uh, my i have reactants that uh, are forming uh, products and my products are forming my reactants back again so i have dynamic reaction so the forward uh, reaction and the reversible reaction is uh, happening at the same time now the concentration of your reactants and your product, uh, products should remain the same at this equilibrium because uh, uh, the forward and reversible reaction at equilibrium 
So if I look at this system, you could see that in here I have a closed system. This is one uh, characteristic of my equilibrium. It has to be in a closed system. So you could see that here I have um, calcium carbonate that would form, uh, it would form um, uh, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. You, st you have equilibrium and you will have uh, the forward reaction uh, equilibrium to your backward reaction as long as you have a closed system. Once you open your system, the carbon dioxide gas would escape and in that case you will not have any equilibrium anymore and you will have only the forward reaction where you will have the uh, calcium carbonate decomposing to calcium oxide and car uh, carbon dioxide gas. So can the position of equilibrium change and the answer to this question is yes. The position of equilibrium can change and there are few parameters that can affect your uh, reaction. Uh, two of those parameters are uh, temperature and concentration. If you change the temperature or the concentration of your reaction, that uh, the position of your equilibrium would shift. Now, uh, for those reactions that involve gases, it would also uh, be affected by another parameter, which is the pressure. So the pressure would only affect reactions where gases are involved. Now, if I look at uh, example for that, if I look at uh, the exothermic reactions, in exothermic reactions, it give off heat. So if I decrease the temperature of my reaction, this means my reaction would just be shifted towards this, uh, uh, the forward reaction where uh, the heat is given off. Now, if I have, uh, if my product concentration decreased uh, relative to my reactants, this means my reaction would just start to be shifted forward also to produce more products to make my reac uh, reaction at equilibrium. So this is what we call Lichet phase. Principle. So this principle states that if you have one factor that uh, affects your reaction is changed, what will happen is the position of equilibrium would just be shifted in towards the direction where to reduce or oppose this change. So if I increase the, the uh, reactants comparing to my product, so my product would just uh, start to reform quickly and my reaction will start to move to the forward reaction in order to uh, make my products equal to my reactants. Now let's look how the uh, change in concentration affects my position of equilibrium. If I look at this example, I have here hydrogen iodide, uh, hydrogen with uh, reacting with the iodine gas to give me hydrogen iodide. So if I add more reactants, this means the concentration of my reactants would be higher than the concentration of my product. So uh, in that case, the system is not uh, in equilibrium any longer. So this is why my reactant will start to just form more of my product to make the uh, concentration of my uh, product similar to my reactants. This would shift the, uh, uh, my direction of my reaction into the forward direction. But what if my product now is higher than my reactants? I expect my product, in the, so now the system is no longer in equilibrium. Now the reversible reaction would predominate in order to make my product, more of my product, forming uh, my, react, uh, my reactants, so the, react, uh, the concentration of my reactants become as similar as the concentration of my product. So more reactants would form. Now let's look at this exercise. In here I have acetic acid uh, and ethanol reacting together in, uh, to form ethyl ethanoate and water. So what happens if I increase the concentration of my ethanol? If I increase the uh, concentration of my ethanol, this means my, my reaction is not in equilibrium anymore. And I expect now my product, uh, my reactants is more than my product. So according to Rochetli, what happens is actually a shift to the forward reaction in order to make my product's uh, concentration as same as the concentration of my uh, reactants. Uh, if I add more ethanol, this means the uh, more ethyl ethanoid should uh, form in order to compensate the uh, increase in the ethanol concentration. Let's look at what happens uh, if I increased the uh, or I added more water. Now I increased the water concentration and my products are now higher than my reactants. So according to Lushatli, my reaction will start to oppose this uh, increase by moving to the reversible reaction and more ethanol would form in order to compensate the increase of my product. 
Now let's look at this exercise in here. I have the same reaction where I have acetic acid reacting with the ethanol to form ethyl ethanol water and water. You could, what happens if I add more uh, ethyl ethanol? Now I'm increasing the product. Uh, uh, the product. This is why, according to Le Chatelier's uh, principle, my reaction would just start to uh, move to the reversible reaction in order to compensate the increasing of the uh, uh, product. Uh, and compensate for this uh, difference in the concentration between the product and the reactant. So my reaction would shift to the reversible reaction. Now, what happens if I removed the ethanol? Now, I removed the ethanol. This means I decreased the reactants. This is why, according to uh, uh, Chatelier's principle, my, react uh, my product will start to uh, reform my uh, reactants in order to compensate the decrease in the ethanol. So to oppose the decrease, actually the reaction would uh, uh, toward the reversible direction. Now let's move to the pressure and see how does pressure affect the position of the equilibrium. If here I looked at this uh, reaction, I have here one mole uh, of a material that uh, in ga uh, gas would react with another mole of gas to form one mole of my product. This means uh, this would mean uh, two moles of my reactants would just give me one mole of my product. So if I increase the pressure, uh, this means I'm shifting the uh, uh, my reaction toward the smaller volume and the smaller volume in that case would be the one mole so my reaction would uh, would uh, just move to the forward direction now let's look at this one you could see here i have uh, a gas and if i increased uh, if i decreased the pressure uh, i have more space this why i can have the two moles of my reactants so the action would move to the reversible direction but if i increased the pressure this means i'm decreasing the volume this is why my reaction would be shifted in order to decrease the uh, volume of my uh, reaction which is the forward direction now let's look at this example uh, to understand the effect of pressure on equilibrium in here i have two moles of uh, sulfur dioxide that would react with one mole uh, of oxygen uh, to give me two moles of uh, sulfur dioxide this means in here i have total of uh, three moles that would give me here two moles so what happens if I increase the pressure? If I increase the pressure, this means the reaction would move to, uh, uh, to the direction where I have less number of molecules, which is the two moles. So if the reaction would move to the forward direction in order to uh, compensate for the decrease uh, in the volume. Now, what happens, in, on the other hand, if I decrease the pressure? So if I decrease the pressure, now the, uh, the reaction have more space. So uh, according the initially the reaction must be shifted towards increasing the number or the mo uh, volume of my reaction which is the reversible direction because it will ha uh, it will mo uh, form the three moles because i have now more space than two moles so if i decrease the pressure my reaction would be shifted towards the less number of moles but if i increase uh, if i decrease the pressure this means i'm increasing the volume this is why my reaction would be uh, shifted towards the, the uh, larger number of moles you have to remember pressure is inversely proportional to the volume this is why increasing the pressure would uh, uh, the reaction must be shifted towards decreasing the volume and if I decrease the pressure, my reaction should be shifted towards increasing the volume. So the change in pressure in here, I have two examples. In here, I have nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen uh, to form ammonia. So what happens if the pressure increase? Uh, so I have here one mole with three moles to give me two moles. If I increase the pressure, this means, so I have B, inversely proportional with one over B. So if I increase the pressure, this means the reaction would be shifted uh, towards decreasing the volume, which is the forward direction. So my reaction would be uh, shifted towards forming more uh, ammonia. But what happens if I decrease the pressure? So if I decrease the pressure, this means I, uh, uh, I, uh, my reaction would be shifted towards increasing the volume or in so in that case, uh, the reaction would be a move to the reversible direction where uh, nitrogen and hydrogen would form. Now, uh, this reaction, I have 
N2O4 in, uh, forms uh, in that case uh, NO2. So if I increase the, again the pressure, uh, if so I'm increasing the pressure, I could see in here I have one mole that is giving me two moles. So if I increased the pressure, this means I have to decrease the volume. So my reaction would be shifted towards the reversible direction where I have less uh, uh, moles, number of moles. But if I uh, decrease the pressure, so I decrease the pressure, I should increase the volume. In that case, my reaction would be shifted towards the forward direction. Now, what about the temperature effect? The temperature effect would uh, be different from the endothermic reaction to the exothermic reaction. The reason behind that, uh, you have here positive value for the delta H and you could see that, uh, that uh, I need uh, energy in order for my reaction to uh, form. So if I increase the uh, temperature, this means uh, I'm increasing the energy of my surrounding. I'm giving my reaction energy. This is why the forward direction, according to the Shetley principle, in that case, the forward direction is would predominate because I have more energy, so I can form more of my product. So the position of equilibrium would form in that case towards the right, producing more of the hydrogen gas and the iodine uh, gas. What about the exothermic reactions? The exothermic reactions, you have to remember that it have minus delta H. And the, uh, so my reaction is actually giving off energy. So if I take away energy from my reaction or I decrease the temperature of my reaction, According to the uh, principle, my reaction would just move to the forward direction in order to compensate the energy I'm taking away from my reaction. If you remember, if, if I'm performing exothermic reaction, I'm performing exothermic reaction in ice path. The reason for that, because the ice would just take away the energy of my reaction, so my reaction would just uh, start to uh, move to the forward direction in order to form my, my product. So I'm increasing my product because I'm moving my reaction towards the forward using this ice pass to take away the energy from my reaction. Let's look at this example. In here, I have endothermic reaction and I have hydrogen iodide to form hydrogen and iodine. Now, I have a temperature increase. What if I increase the temperature of my reaction? This is an endothermic reaction. This means it needs energy in order to uh, form my product. So if I increase the energy of my reaction, I increase the temperature, this means my reaction would just move to the forward reaction in order to compensate for the increase of my reaction. Now, what happens if I decrease the temperature? Now, if I decrease the temperature, the, the product is no longer uh, forming. Instead, I have the reversible reaction in order to compensate for the decrease in the temperature of my reactants. So I have here the reversible reaction would predominate according to Lushetri's principle. Now, what about uh, the... Um, what about the, this example in here? I have uh, um, uh, sulfur dioxide reacting with oxygen to give me sulfur trioxide. Uh, uh, in here, if I increase the temperature, you could see that this is an exothermic reaction. So it gives off energy. So if I increase the temperature more, my reaction will uh, just be shifted towards the reversible reaction. Increase the temperature of my reaction because I'm giving more energy. Now, what about decreasing the temperature? Decreasing the temperature, it's like using ice baths or, uh, 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 or any form that would take away energy from my reaction in order to push my reaction to the forward direction. Now, let's move to this exercise, predict the effect of increasing temperature. So I'm increasing the temperature on this reaction. This reaction is actually endothermic reaction. So if I increase the temperature, I'm giving my reaction possibility to form more of my product so the forward reaction would just predominate now let's look at this exercise in here i have um, uh, silver uh, carbonate that would uh, give me uh, silver uh, oxide and the carbon uh, dioxide gas at constant uh, constant pressure if i increase the, the temperature of my reaction this means my, uh, more of my carbon dioxide would form is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Now I'm increasing the temperature, more of my product is forming. This means my reaction is moving forward in the forward direction. This means my reaction is actually endothermic reaction because it starts to compensate the increase of the temperature by producing more of my product. So the reaction is endothermic reaction. 
What about catalyst? Does catalyst affect the position of my equilibrium? Actually, no. It does not affect the position of my equilibrium. It affects only the time of my uh, to reach this equilibrium. So I'm just speeding up the forward direction as well as speeding up the reversible direction. So I'm reaching the position of equilibrium earlier than the normal reaction. So if my reaction uh, takes two hours to happen, actually it will take shorter time to uh, uh, for my action to happen if I add ca a catalyst. So the catalyst does not affect the position of my equilibrium. Instead, it affects only the time that I'm reaching the position of my equilibrium. So in next video, we will explain the equilibrium expressions and the equilibrium constant. Until next video, thank you and goodbye.